Benjamin Barber, an eminent political theorist, once said, I don't divide the world into the weak and the strong, or the successes and the failures, I divide the world into the learners and non-learners. What on earth would make someone a non-learner? Everyone is born with an intense drive to learn. Infants stretch their skills daily. Not just ordinary skills, but the most difficult tasks of a lifetime, like learning to walk and talk. They never decide it's too hard or not worth the effort. Babies don't worry about making mistakes or humiliating themselves. They walk, they fall, they get up. They just barge forward. What could put an end to this exuberant learning? The fixed mindset. As soon as children become able to evaluate themselves, some of them become afraid of challenges. They become afraid of not being smart. I have studied thousands of people from preschoolers on, and it's breathtaking how many reject an opportunity to learn. We offered four-year-olds a choice, they could redo an easy jigsaw puzzle, or they could try a harder one. Even at this tender age, children with the fixed mints at the ones who believed in fixed traits stuck with the safe one. Kids who are born smart don't do mistakes, they told us. Children with the growth mints at the ones who believed you could get smarter thought it was a strange choice. Why are you asking me this, lady? Why would anyone want to keep doing the same puzzle over and over? They chose one hard one after another. I'm dying to figure them out. Exclaimed one little girl. So children with the fixed mindset want to make sure they succeed. Smart people should always succeed. But for children with the growth. Mindset, success is about stretching themselves. It's about becoming. Smarter. One seventh grade girl summed it up. I think intelligence is something you have to work for. It isn't just given to you. Most kids, if they're not sure of an answer, will not raise their hand to answer the question. But what I usually do, is raise my hand, because if I'm wrong, then my mistake will be corrected. Or I will raise my hand and say, how would this be solved, or I don't get this. Can you help me? Just by doing, that I'm increasing my intelligence. Beyond puzzles. It's one thing to pass up a puzzle. It's another to pass up an opportunity that's important to your future. To see if this would happen, we took advantage of an unusual situation. At the University of Hong Kong, everything is in English. Classes are in English, textbooks are in English, and exams are in English. But some students who enter the university are not fluent in English, so it would make sense for them to do something about it in a hurry. As students arrived to register for their freshman year, we knew which ones were not skilled in English. And we asked them a key question, if the faculty offered a course for students who need to improve their English skills, would you take it? We also measured their mindset. We did this by asking them how much they agreed with statements like this. You have a certain amount of intelligence, and you can't really do much to change it. People who agree with this kind of statement lean toward a fixed mindset. Those who lean toward a growth mindset agree that you can always substantially change how intelligent you are. Later, we looked at who said yes to the English course. Students with the growth mindset said an emphatic yes. But those with the Ford mindset were not very interested. Believing that success is about learning, students with the growth mindset seized the chance. But those with the fixed mindset didn't want to expose their deficiencies. Instead, to feel smart in the short run, they were willing to put their college careers at risk. This is how the fox mindset makes people into non-learners.